I mean, what, what we did, the way Zero Shoes started, I mean, the short version of the story is I built a website one night, despite my wife telling me not to, but you know, she was asleep, so she didn't know. <laughs> and, and then I put it online and um, I, I gave away the, the recipe, if you will. I literally made videos saying, here's how to make our products. Here's where you can go get the materials, knock yourself out, or, you know, we've already put it together for you at a better price. And can I just pause you for a minute? At that moment, when you did that, were you thinking, I'm going to build this $10 million company? Or were you like, like, ah, I just, you know, it it tied back to your belief about um, the way shoes were damaging feet. No, I hadn't hadn't even gotten that far. I really loved the whole, uh, I had been, I'd gotten back into sprinting when I was 45. I was getting injured all the time. I, uh, a friend of mine told me to try taking off my shoes and running barefoot, changed my life, made my injuries go away. Um, I became faster. I was, became a master's all American sprinter, which meant I was one of the fastest guys over at that time, 45 uh, in America. Um, uh, Technically for men over 55, you're possibly looking at the fastest Jew in the world. (laughs) Just FYI. And so uh, I liked that whole barefoot experience and wanted to have that as often as I could. So I started making these super simple sandals for yourself. Yeah, for me, for my wife, for a couple other barefoot runners. And just, then you and then you built a website to be like, hey, I just want to share this with you. I, you um, actually, someone said I'm writing a book about barefoot running and I've got a contract. And if you had a website, I'd put you in the book. So okay. I rushed home and pitched this brilliant idea to my wife who told me not to do it because I was an idiot. There's no company formed at that point. There's none of, none of oh, that. No, 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 no. I had to make up a name like that night. Um, it, How'd you come up with zero shoes? I didn't. I came up with invisible shoes and I couldn't get invisible shoes.com, but I could get invisible shoe.com. Okay. And later I met the way zero happened. There's two parts to the story. One is I met a guy uh, who used to be the VP of marketing for Schwinn fitness. And he had heard about me. We'd never met. We get together. And the first thing he says, when he sees me, he goes, I can see them. I said, <laughs> yeah, but it, you know, feels like they're invisible. He goes, I can see them. I said, all right. So we okay. worked right. with a, uh, what we, well, what turned out to be a very expensive marketing agency uh, early on. And they came up with some horrible names. Mm. Um, here's one to see here. You might have to write this down. X O I C S. X O I, I don't even know. How, how do you say it? I don't know. <laughs> so, that, that was the problem. I said, don't know how to say it. Don't know how to spell it. We're an internet company. They said, but you can own it. I went, I don't have the money to get people to learn how to say some weird collection of things, but I like the X. And so by I, the way, I, by the way, how are you bootstrapping this at the time? How are you, how are you, there's no revenue. So how are you paying for this marketing firm and doing all this stuff? Oh no. Th- at this point we had money. I mean, this is about two years in. Okay. Okay. So, right, right, um, right. I mean, we didn't have a lot of money, but we had some money. Okay. Gotcha. So, um, so, so, so I like the X and one day after I was done, uh, training on the track, I was literally just sitting in my car thinking, I like the X. What can I do that starts with an X? And I thought of zero. Okay. And then I thought of the logo and, you know, kind of all popped in my head. So and zero um, shoes was available when you looked it up on GoDaddy. It was still there. Zero shoes was available. Z E R O shoes was not available. Mm. Um, and the guy who had it uh, wouldn't sell it. He wanted $50,000 for it. And I told him that was ridiculous. And so I just paid to have an ad on his, the site. Wasn't there. It was just AdWords or AdSense ad just you know, links to other things. Okay. So I paid and did the sneaky thing to make sure my ad showed up on his site and it said, are you looking for xeroshoes.com? Click here. So instead of giving him 50 grand, I was giving him like 10 bucks a month uh, worth of AdSense revenue. And then he did a stupid thing. He sold the domain to a Denver domain company. And I contacted them and I said, you know that I have the trademark for Zero Shoes. So you shouldn't have bought this because I can petition and it'll cost me $2,000 and I'll own it. Uh, and you get nothing. Mm. You know, you lose whatever you paid mm. or, you know, I'll be a nice guy. I'll give you a, a thousand bucks. And if you give it to me right now, they said done. Okay. All right. At, at, at what point did you know that you had a, you had something real? At what day point one. did you, you day knew, one. you knew. Yeah. Because on day one, I mean, I launched the site. I posted a couple of things, links and, you know, some news groups or it wasn't even a Facebook page that, that anyone used. It was like Google groups and people responded to it. One of the, we, we sold our first pair like the day I launched the site to a guy in, which was in late November, to a guy in Minnesota. Did you have um, the material? Or what are you making these things at well, home? So to answer your question of how we financed it originally, uh, that wasn't actually your question, but that's what I thought you were gonna ask, is you know I was buying material for 50 bucks that we were selling for a hundred bucks. And then I would buy a hundred bucks worth and we'd sell uh, it for 200 bucks. And okay. another rinse okay. and repeat. And so, uh, but the thing that also convinced us was in early spring, like March, 
Lane and I are walking downtown on the Pearl Street Mall, and this pack of girls, like 17-year-old girls, run up and go, point at our feet and go, oh, those sandals are sick. Where do you get those? And I said, we're billionaires. So <laughs> I haven't cracked that code yet. There, there's a there. Because it was sandals. At first, it was sandals. At first, it was a do-it-yourself sandal-making kit. Could not wow. have been more finicky. I mean, you had to wow. cut it out and lace them up, and yeah, it was crazy. And you launched, this, you launched the website, and boom, you're shipping these kits, like, right away. Yeah. Out of, out of the floor of a corner of a spare bedroom. We literally, we literally had a, de not a debate, a discussion about, should we go buy a folding table and take stuff off the floor? And then another one, should we buy two more tables? I mean, they're $34 each. That's, you know, are we committed to this? Can I just ask you, how are you, if you don't mind, maybe this is too personal, but like, how are you living? How are you surviving, eating? What, did you have like a ton of money saved up to get through this period? Quite the opposite. Actually, it's kind of funny, um, not ha ha funny. We, so Lane and I had been retired from 2000 to 2009. We had done some clever real estate investing that was throwing off just enough cash that we didn't have to work. Not, you know, huge amount, but enough that like if, if someone gave you just enough money where you wouldn't have to work again, would you take it and not work? And the answer is okay. Yeah. So <laughs> we saw, uh, it was all based in real estate. And in 2006, we saw the writing on the wall and started selling all of our the properties that we were owning or managing. And, um, uh, we were about to run out of money uh, and we had maybe a month's worth of money, maybe a little, maybe a tiny bit more. That, yeah. Okay. That's a little scary. All right. Well, for Lena, um, I think we were maybe two months out and, you know, I said, look, I'll think of something. Oh, I know what it was. Well, I said, I'll think of something to do. I mean, I'm not at a point where I'll do anything. I mean, I know ways of making money, but I'm not ready to do those yet because okay. I don't feel back up against the wall enough. Um, but we had started a search engine marketing business. And so that was bringing in some cash. And oh. because I've been doing, I've been an internet marketer since 1992. And okay. so that, so in a way, when I built the website and showed it to Lena the next morning and she got all mad at me, I said, uh, think of it as a case study for our search engine business. Cause I'm starting it from nothing and I'll probably own this category in about I three see. months. And it only took me about six weeks. I see. And okay. So that was the idea. Uh, and uh. It, I mean, to be honest, I, I don't even know the answer to your question really, because I don't know that we even took a salary. But the reason I don't know the answer is that when Lane and I became a couple, she took over everything related to finance. And I, I don't have a clue about <laughs> anything about our finances for the last 20 years. You know what? We're in the same boat, my friend. I always tell my wife, I'm like, you know, if some, something happens to you, like, I don't even know, like, how to get into anything. I don't, passwords I or whatever. That we have a checking account somewhere. <laughs> I, 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 I've seen a safety deposit key. I don't know where it is. I, I remember I, my dad used to tell me, he's like, well, how do you know she's not like putting money somewhere that you, you don't know about? I'm like, I, I hope she is great. Good for her. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, my, my version of that is um, she's, I, I don't, uh, we're both relatively frugal people. And so, um, <laughs> you know, she hasn't said, Hey, you can't buy it yet. Is it so, now it's interesting. Does she run the finances for the business too? Yeah. She's your, she's your in-house CFO. Basically. She is, she is the co-founder and CFO. Gotcha. That, that's, that's, that's so awesome. So tell us now, like as today, zero shoes, like give, give us the, give us the three minute zero shoes, you know, overview, right? Uh, like the, the, the Steven Sashin overview of the company. Well, it's actually easier than that. Um, I just like to ask people when they ask me what I do for a living, I say, well, just here's a, what's going to sound like a weird question, but do your feet feel better at the end of the day than they did at the beginning of the day? And no one ever says yes. And I go, well, that's because your shoes aren't letting your feet do what they're naturally supposed to do, which is bend and flex and move and feel things. You have a quarter of the bones and joints of your whole body are in your feet and ankles, and you have more nerve endings in your soles than anywhere at your fingertips and your lips. I didn't know and that. Shoes don't let you do that. Um, we make shoes that are designed to let your feet do what's natural, plus they're so lightweight. We've had people email saying they accidentally got into bed wearing them still because they forgot they were on, not because they passed out drunk. And, um, and, that, and so we make shoes and boots and sandals that people use for everything from taking a walk to running ultra marathons to just going to work all day. How do you, how do you not lose sleep at night over the competition or over, or over night, night, Nike or Adidas is like, oh, we're, we're, we're going to make zero shoes too. To quote cavemen, competition, good. Um, <laughs> you, you may have noticed, let's use a different uh, business other than footwear. How many companies make cars? Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. I mean, you're right. How many companies make laundry detergent? How many companies make anything you've ever bought? You know, if you don't have competition, there's something wrong. Right. Probably. Um, so yeah. there's always a way to differentiate yourself either okay. through product or marketing or both. 
Um, frankly, Nike most recently came out talking about natural movement almost the way we do for a product that couldn't be further away. But the fact that they're using my language is really good for us. It, it validates what we're doing. And, and here's what I can tell you. The CEOs of every major footwear company know that what we're doing is the real deal. And they also know that they can't do it authentically because it would be telling everyone that what they've been doing right. for the last 50 years is complete bullshit. Right, right, right. Exactly. Now, are you thinking that uh, one of these guys, they're going to call you and say, hey, we want to we wanna buy the company? Like, you know. Uh, I don't know. Um, if they're smart, they would for a list of reasons, either offensively or defensively. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, we... The thing about natural movement, I met some guys who had been in footwear for 35 years when we first got this business started, like seven months in. They were like, they're like, you're smoking crack, man. They're, no, no, no. They said, what you're doing is the most important thing in footwear, and no oh. one's doing it. Wow. This is when all we were doing was, you know, a piece of rubber strapped to your foot. <laughs> so everybody in footwear knows this. Um, or more accurately, everyone who's been in footwear for a while knows I see, this. I see. The people who've been indoctrinated since the advent of padding and motion control they still think padding and motion control is in some form legitimate. It's completely not. So uh, Dr. Irene Davis from Harvard uh, did it best at a panel discussion at the American College of Sports Medicine that I was on with some guys from Brooks and Adidas. She says, um, which was fun in and of itself. She says, in the 60s, we were running in super thin sole running shoes. We played basketball in Chuck Taylors. We weren't seeing the kind of injury or the type of injury or the severity of injury we're seeing now. So what problem were you trying to solve and why didn't it work? And the Nike, uh, sorry, the Adidas and Brooks guys had no response. And I said, let's just uh, call the way it is. The more you understand about feet and biomechanics and the more you understand about the research behind natural movement, the more it becomes impossible to conclude anything other than the design of the modern athletic shoe is just wrong. Wow. And the guy from Adidas says, wow. Wow. Um, yeah, but not everyone's going to switch to your shoes right away. <laughs> which is true because you know they've indoctrinated people yep. my thought was wow you just told me that i got about a half a billion dollar runway until you freak out <laughs> i can work with that wow i mean all these years they've been telling us they got we got to have all this lying lying use, wow. the, right, use the right verb please wow wow unbelievable so yeah buy this shoe and smoke these cigarettes or what, all these things they used to tell us to do and <laughs> yeah well cigarettes are good for your lungs because you're inhaling that was literally an old ad um and and uh, the shoes will help you know get rid of will help you run faster check this one out so Elliot kipchoge just ran the sub Terra marathon right everyone's making it seem like it's because of the shoes Let's do a little math, shall we? Mm. We can do this fast. First of all, this is one of the greatest athletes of all time. World champion marathoner, holds the world record two, two hours, one minute, 38 seconds on a regular marathon course that goes uphill, downhill, faster, slower, has people who you know, pass him. Typically, he's in front yep. for the whole thing. But regardless, you know, he's just on his own running a race. Yep. Then they put him on a perfect course that just goes back and forth a couple times. Mm -hmm. Totally flat great you know elevation the temperature happens to be perfect uh and um he's got five guys in front of him in a v shape that he's I drafting see. on who are pacing because they're running against like these um yeah. laser lines that are projected on the road from a car in front of them they yep. swap out on a regular basis with new pacers they got a pacer behind him because he likes to feel like he's being chased uh and he runs basically two minutes faster okay that's 4.6 seconds per mile faster and you think it's because of the shoes? <laughs> yeah, well, is that how they pitched it? What was the shoe? I don't know. What was he wearing? I had no well, idea. It's this Nike shoe that has, you know, carbon ah, fiber and I, certain I, magic foam. And, you know, I think, uh, I think the primary ingredient is just uh, uh, placebo. I see. I see. I see. Okay. All right. And, and right now, of course, everybody can just go to zeroshoes.com, right? With an X. Yes, xeroshoes.com, and depending on when they're seeing this, and again, we just started our Black Cyber Thanks Kwanzaa Biscuits anniversary warehouse clearance and tariff release sale. You know, I, I'm I'm waiting for the for the case of shoes to show up at my house. Do I need to resend you my address uh, and your money? <laughs> I mean, we have a buy one get the one you bought. Obviously. Okay. 